Hey everyone, Boost Long back with another video. Today I'll be walking through how you can debloat Bootstrap and use it in a production environment. Now I'll be going into this assuming that you have a basic understanding of HTML and CSS. You don't necessarily have to have experience with Bootstrap, but it might help a little bit. So why use Bootstrap in production instead of just for prototyping? One of the main benefits is it's going to save you a lot of time. Bootstrap comes with an extensive library of commonly used UI components, everything from buttons, alerts, menus, and has a really great responsive grid system. Writing all of these yourself would take a lot of time. Another benefit is that it's already been thoroughly tested by millions of users and it's cross-browser friendly. So this saves you the time of manually testing your CSS yourself and debugging. A common complaint about websites that use Bootstrap is they have a very bootstrappy look to them. Now this is easily fixed by using the SAS, Less, or Stylus version of Bootstrap. When you install this, it's very modular and very customizable. And that's what we'll be using today. Last but not least, your developers probably already know how to use it. Bootstrap is used by millions of people all over the world. And chances are, the developers that you work with have at least some exposure to it. A common complaint about Bootstrap is that it's bloated. That it makes your CSS file way too big, and the framework contains a lot of UI components that you'll never use. So let's take a look at just how bloated Bootstrap really is. If we look at the CSS, an unminified version of the CSS is 146 KB. When we minify it, it gets a little bit better, but it's still 121 KB. Now that's bigger than I'd want my CSS to be for any project. Now if we add the JavaScript library of Bootstrap to our project, we tack on another 70 to 37 KB just for the components, and then they're dependent on jQuery, so we can add another 29.5 KB to that. The result of this is a bootstrap project can contain anywhere from 121 KB to 245 KB. And that's just the framework itself without taking into account your own static assets or any external data that you'll be downloading. So we have a lot of work to do, but by the end of this project, we should be able to get Bootstrap down to around 10K or less. We'll start off the project by creating the structure and installing any dependencies, namely Node.js. Once our project is set up, we'll download Bootstrap SAS and we'll use Webpack to compile our SAS into CSS, and then we'll also use it to minify our CSS and remove any CSS selectors that we're not using. The last thing that we'll do is we'll make sure that gzip compression is enabled on our server. Now if you're using shared serving, chances are you won't need to do a thing and it's already enabled. But if you're running your own server, I'll show you how you can get it up, get gzip compression running on both Nginx and Apache servers. Alright, so now that we got that covered, let's get started. 